First of all, I want to apologize. I want to say that I'm sorry, not only just to you, but to the entire black community. Because <laughs> so, I can understand how apologize to the Shannon Sharp is the whole it, black community. I can understand the feelings that you guys feel because it does Shannon come from Shannon Sharp is the I whole like black community. That I like empathy, that I like uh, lack understanding. And, uh, and it's, and that's not like, that's not me. That's not my heart. He just says, if like anything, that if you know me, uh, uh, Shannon, then you don't really. Yo, hit that like button, man. I just wanted to chop this up because I'm sitting here thinking to myself and I'm like, okay. So last week, Drew Brees kind of set the world on fire, no pun intended, with his comments about Kaepernick, comments that he had made four years ago, actually. And they hit differently because more people are awakened now to it, more people are uh, reading more, more people are paying more attention, people are out of work, things like that. So the damage control starts, and I told you apology was going to come, and he had a PR apology, and then... I start seeing all of this uh, capping from from high elite black sports figures. First name was Tony Dungy. I said, up, oh, I knew it. Now, Tony Dungy, soft-spoken Tony Dungy, former head coach, Hall of Famer, first black quarterback to win a, a black head coach to win a Super Bowl. Uh, very always passive, aggressive, very reasonable. I mean, if, if Tony Dungy would get hit in the head with a rock, he probably would just look at you and smile. It, it, it might give you a hug. That's just how Tony Dungy operates. He's always been a pro-Christian, forget and forgive type of Negro. And then, so Tony comes out and says, well, we have to, we, we shouldn't villainize Drew Brees for this, and we need this for dialogue. You might have a point. We do need some dialogue, but to keep up this pattern where I'm going here, because after, after Tony Dungy caps for him, here comes Charles Barkley. You know, he made a mistake, Kenny. What he said was terrible, but we, we, we I don't run with them all. We we got to continue to, to, to let people say what they say. And, I, you know, Charles going you know come to the, to the table with plenty of butter biscuits. You know what I mean? We love Charles as a player, but as an analyst, as a person, we kind of know what kind of what part of the fence Charles Barkley sits on. You know, he was, the, he was one of the only few black celebrities that publicly put it out there that he was Republican years ago. So then Charles speaks up. And then you got Shaq. And, you know, and Shaq actually is a certified police officer. So Shaq takes up for him and was like, oh, I accept the apology. I'm like, hold up. Who are you to accept an apology? Like, you, you, like, you speak for the whole black community. <laughs> you know what I mean? So because Shaq, so just cause Shaq accepts Drew Brees' apology, it's all good. You're not a teammate of Drew's. You probably never even met the man before. But it's, it's all good for black folks because you accepted it, you know. And I'll play a video clip of Shaq on Fox a few years ago and how, you know, he basically was like bullshitting on Cap and the whole thing anyway. He's pro-military. His grandfather was in. I'm like, yeah, a lot of us were. And they, and they still couldn't sit in at certain restaurants when they came home. What are you talking about? So, okay, that's it. That's Dungy. That's Barkley. That's Shaq. Then you go down to who, who the fuck else was? Shannon Sharp. Uncle Shay. Now, people say, well, what's wrong? Uncle Shay pro-black. Uncle Shay's pro-black to a certain degree. Um, he will always stand with that NFL fraternity to shield when it all said and done, when it all when the dust all clears. He was pro Kaepernick until that tryout situation last year in October, and that kind of broke the camel's back, and Shannon had to back off when he didn't show up to the tryout. See, Shannon is in that fraternity. Shannon's a three-time Super Bowl champion. Shannon is in the Hall of Fame. He's, his loyalty to the brand of the NFL was always going to overtrump anything from any individual. So Shannon, of course, went off on Drew Brees, but then they did an episode yesterday, and Shannon was like, "I was, I had a phone call with Drew Brees." So he had a call with Drew Brees, and because him and Drew Brees settled it, I'm like, well, "What the fuck is you apologizing to Shannon?" Sh I don't think. Why do they feel like these people speak for the black community? <laughs> Shannon Sharp, Charles Barkley. Shaq and Tony Dungy represent all of us, huh? And my thing I'm putting together is where the fuck was the support for Michael Vick, who was the a black quarterback, who was the face of a franchise in the blackest city in, 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 in America for the Falcons, you know, cornrows, tattoos. He was almost like Iverson-like. And when he got in trouble for those dogs and served his time, it split the fan base in half because a lot of white Georgians and Falcons fans, they stopped fucking with him. You know, a lot of black fans kept riding with him. But I didn't see a lot of the support for Michael Vick from his 
uh, peers or his you know fellow black people in sports other, other than Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy helped him get back into the league. But to this day, Michael Vick is still living in apology. Still, to this day, I remember a few years ago the Steelers signed him as a backup. He was never gonna. He was never a threat to be the the, the starter. At, at most, Ben was gonna get hurt. He played two games, and they were protesting in front of the facility. They didn't want a dog killer on the team. And you know, it's more than just being a dog killer. It's more than just that. You know, these people. They they villainize. They villainize this man. And I didn't see any of the same support for Michael Vick when he had his shit going on. And with Cap, same thing. They all, a lot of them turned to the, the, the left cheek when Cap was doing this thing. Now they all like, yeah, you was right, dog. <laughs> you was right. You know, Shannon rode with him until the NFL gave him that tryout. Shaq and Charles and them definitely wasn't with that. You know, and then most of these men I'm bringing up, they're all from the deep south. Shannon's from Georgia. Uh, Shaq is from... Jersey, by the way, of Louisiana. Charles is from the deep south of my Alabama. I don't know what it is about, and they're all baby boomers. I don't know what it is, man. <laughs> but I'm like, where was this support for Colin Kaepernick and Michael Vick, two other minority quarterbacks, when they had some shit that they did, rather it was looked at as good or bad, villainized or not. I didn't see a lot of y'all coming out here in droves to support them. But, oh, God forbid Drew Brees is villainized and looks like a bad person going into the NFL. It's a new season. They got to sell tickets for those games. They got to fill up that big-ass stadium. And they can't afford to have all of the black people in New Orleans mad at them. They need them to buy tickets. They need people to watch these games, you know? So they're like, if he was just a regular quarterback, probably wouldn't have been the same. But because he's a top two, top three quarterback, the NFL is like calling people left and right. Yo, somebody, you got to call Drew. You got to say this. You got to – it's fixed. They are going to make sure by the time September rolls around, all is forgiven and forgotten about what Drew Brees said, even though he said it four years ago, and y'all are going to fucking watch these games. You know what I'm saying? You just see the difference in the support system and all the capping that they do for certain people. And I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> you know? So, and like I say, this whole situation is bigger than Drew Brees. Uh, and I'll get on later on about the pandering. You know, you got Congress people coming to the press conferences and kente cloths, and this whole shit is a circus act now. But I, I was like, yo, am I the only one seeing this shit? Like they are just capping for Drew Brees, so tough. And I'm like, do, do I think Drew Brees? Do I think he's racist? I, I, I don't know about that. I definitely think he sees the world from a white man's perspective. You know. And I don't think his apology was sincere at all. He just said what he had to say because he wanted to get niggas off his back. And I'm pretty sure he's going to buy a lot of people Rolexes on the team when training camp starts and try to uh, apologize his way to get people to fuck with him again. And he's going to be living an apology. And he should. He should be living the same apology to, towards the black community that Michael Vick has been living towards the white community since fucking, what, 2007? Come on now. But I'm going to play the Shaq clip, and y'all see, like I say, these motherfuckers' true colors is definitely out here. You're not making mistakes. These people are just telling you what it is. I'll probably go about it a different way. Uh, you know, my question is, what happened last year? How come you didn't decide to do this last year or the year before that or the year before that? So I, I, I don't know, Colin, but again, to each his own. Uh, I don't really have a say on it, but I would never do that. My father was a military man, and, you know, he protected this country. Uh, uncles are, are in law enforcement. You know, they go out and, and work hard every day. Just, you know, other ways to get your point across. So you're, you're an African-American, uh, you're an African-American, and a lot of people feel as though, uh, from your perspective, you should be standing with Colin Kaepernick, but you also are pro-military and pro-cop. Can you be both? Yes, I can be both. Um, again, you know, <clears throat> my thing is, you know, you have to you have to enter onto the scene one way. You know, people like Muhammad Ali and Bill Russell, they were one way their whole career. You can't show us something and then go to another just because of you know certain issues. Again, yeah. I'm I'm aware of all the issues, but you know, my question is. How come you didn't do it last year? Or how come you didn't do it when you first entered the NFL? Again, I, I don't know, Colin, to each his own, you know. He has his, you know, it's his, you know, constitutional right to do that, but I would never do that.